The Squatter Man Project, Part 15, Odin. Words don't merely reflect our perception of the world. Rather, we perceive and experience the world in the particular ways that our language demands of us. Thinking outside of language is literally unthinkable, because all thought takes place within language. Hence, the inherent godlike creative powers of words. The first systems of writing developed and used by the Norse and other Germanic peoples were runic alphabets, inspired by events witnessed in the sky. The prehistoric earthlings would begin to communicate using a writing system first perceived from the heavens, from the manifestation taking place in the auroral bombardment of the earth. They created symbols to describe these events, and these symbols have assimilated into our time with the knowledge having been forgotten as the trauma in the mind of the cataclysmic soul overwhelmed the thoughts of the survivors. Meaning becomes lost, belief becomes separated, and fact becomes fiction. The runes functioned as letters, but they were much more than just letters in the sense in which we today understand the term. Each rune was an ideographic or pictographic symbol of some cosmological principle or power, and to write a rune was to invoke and direct the force from which it stood. In Norse mythology, Odin's quest for wisdom is never ending, and he is willing to pay any price. It seems that he craves the understanding of life's mysteries more than anything else, and on one occasion he hung on the tree of life wounded himself with a spear and fasted from food and drink for nine windy days and nights in order to discover the mystical knowledge of the runes. It seems there was a clear quest to obtain knowledge of the visible things not within reach. In desperation for this understanding, he once ventured to a popular protected well where, amongst the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil, there dwelt the guardian Mirmer a shadowy being whose knowledge of all things was particularly unparalleled among the inhabitants of the divine cosmos. He achieved the status largely by taking his water from the well, whose waters impact the cosmic knowledge. When Odin arrived, he asked Mirmer for a drink from the water, knowing the value of such a drought. His request is refused. That is, of course, unless the seeker of truth offered an eye in return. According to translated texts, Olden gouged out one of his eyes and dropped it into the well. Having made the necessary sacrifice, Mirmer dipped his horn into the well and offered the now one-eyed god a drink. His relinquishment of an eye should surely be understood as having exchanged a perception for a profound understanding. Overwhelmed with countless petty troubles, for a sacred mode of perception informed by divine ancestral wisdom. The fact that Odin specifically sacrificed an eye is surely significant. In all ages, the eye has been seen as a poetic symbol for perception in general. Considering the astonishing number of expressions, both in everyday usage and in the works of ancient poets and chroniclers, that use vision as a metaphor for perceiving and understanding of something, everything even, and the all-seeing eye of cosmic perception is clear across the ancient world. Given that Odin's eye was sacrificed in order to obtain an enhanced perception, it seems highly likely that his pledge of an eye symbolizes trading one mode of perception for another. It is also said that the runes emanate from the black sun, and it is said that the combination of the man rune and the year rune are a sign of the tree of life. Their combination forms the shape of the squatter man. The squatter man emerges from the tree of life that emanated from the assembly of the gods in the north and made up the navel of the world. The axis mundi, the auroral display under the assembly of the gods range from the pillar, the pyramid, the tree, the squatter man, to and the ladder, all of which became sacred symbols to ancient observers. The story of the Squatter Man is THE story. It's the greatest story to be told. It's just that so few know about it and it was impossible to know the story before Anthony Peratt and David Talbot undertook the research. 
research that is still being kept from the public eye. This is the truth of our existence and we will continue to bring this information to the subscribers of the Lost History Channel in collaboration with our friend Kronos. According to Kronos, studying the Cosmic Mountain will be very fruitful because most have never heard the term and scholars do know about it because it is in the literature. They don't understand it, but they know about it. It's Mount Olympus, Mount Miru, Mount Sumiru, and many, many more. It's the abode of the gods. It's the rainbow bridge that connects Midgard to Ashgard. And when that bridge trembles, it's a sign of Ragnarök, the destruction of the universe. That destruction is why we are now a fallen race and lost paradise. It is why the star within the circle is now an evil symbol. In the pre-Christian Germanic worldview, the spoken word possesses frightfully strong creative powers. As one famous Scandinavian scholar notes, the pronouncement of words was recognized to have a tremendous influence over the concerns of life. The impact of a sentence uttered aloud could not be questioned and could never be taken back, as if it had become somehow physical. Words create reality, not the other way around. And when you read that Olden says in these texts that, I know that I hung on the wind-blasted tree all of nights nine, pierced by my spear and given to Olden, my self-sacrifice to myself on that pole, of which none know where its roots run. No aid I received, not even a sip from the horn. Peering down, I took up the runes. Screaming, I grasped them, then I fell back from there. It becomes clearly apparent that language is an inescapable structuring element of perception. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.